All right, kids, 4.3, part four. This is a long one. Um, this, I mean, chapter 4.3 is long. This one is actually the shortest of the four parts, so just bear with me. We're almost done. Um, just a recap of what we did in part one, two, and three. Part one, we talked about the first derivative test for local maxes or mins. So local max, we're looking for where this reaches a high point. Local min, where it reaches a low point. In order to do that, we find the critical numbers for our function. To find the critical numbers, we set the derivative equal to zero, and we also see where the second derivative is undefined. Those numbers are called the critical numbers of the functions. If a function has a local max or min, it has to happen at a critical point, but not all critical points produce local maxes and mins, so we have to test those critical points. So we draw a number line. We see how the derivative behaves before, between, and after our critical numbers. If the derivative changes from negative to positive at a critical number, then the original function must change from decreasing to increasing there, and we'll have a local min, because we're going to go decreasing, and the original function will be increasing. Well, decrease and increase, we'll have a local min. If the derivative changes from positive to negative, then the original function changes from increasing to decreasing, and we'll have a local max. If the derivative does not change sign, then that critical number is neither a local max or min. So that has a formal name. It's called the first derivative test for local max and mins. The next thing we did is we showed how we used second derivatives to check concavity. No super formal name there. We're just using the second derivative to check concavity. We found the potential inflection points by setting the second derivative equal to zero and seeing where the second derivative was undefined. Then we tested the second derivative before, between, and after our potential inflection points. If the second derivative changed sign at a potential inflection point, then we have an actual inflection point at those points. If the second derivative does not change sign to the right and left of a potential inflection point, then that potential inflection point is not an actual inflection point. Wherever a second derivative is equal to zero, the original function is concave up there. Wherever, or it could be concave up and increasing, or it could be concave up and decreasing. Wherever a second derivative is negative, the function's concave down, or it could be concave down this way, or it could be concave down and increasing. Concave down, decreasing. Right there. So if the second derivative is negative, the original function is concave down. So that's what we did. We did several examples. All right, last thing in this section is just another test. Now that we've talked about concavity, we can talk about another test for local maxes and mins. Notice right here on this little picture, if a function's concave up and it changes from decreasing to increasing, we're going to have a local min. So whenever a function behaves this way, and if the local min is in this part of the function, it's gonna be concave up. If a function's concave down and it goes from increasing to decreasing, we have a local max. And we're going to use that to develop what we call the second derivative test for local max and mins. Now be careful because we use the second derivative to find the concavity of a function. It's not called the second derivative test though just using it. We have another test for local maxes and mins, so this is how we can use the second derivative test to determine if a critical number is a local max or min. So just like in the first derivative test, we find the critical numbers, then we plug the critical number into the second derivative. If, uh, if the second derivative is positive at that critical number, must mean it's concave up as it passes through C, so then we must have a local min at C. So when we take the critical number, plug it into the second derivative, if the result is positive, then we know the function's concave up. So if it's concave up and it's a critical number, that critical number must be a local min. If when we take this, the critical number and stick it into the second derivative and it's negative, the second derivative is negative, it must be concave down, and we're gonna have a local maximum at C. If we stick the critical number into the second derivative and the result is neither positive or negative, it's zero, then it's inconclusive. This test is inconclusive. And 
and you must use the first derivative test. But sometimes it's a nice quick check. So let's apply this to a function that we've already done. Let's revisit for the 800th millionth time. 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 72x plus 10. We saw that the critical numbers were negative 3 and 4. So if you go back to the previous lecture, we set the derivative equal to 0. We got the critical numbers to, neg for, uh, to be negative 3 and 4. We take the second derivative, and we got the second derivative to be 12x minus 6. So now we're going to take each critical number and stick it into the second derivative. So when we stick negative 3 into the second derivative, I don't even really care what the output is. I mean, we can see that negative um, 12 times negative 3 minus 6 is going to be negative 42, but all I care is that it's negative. And if we stick a critical number into a second derivative and the result is negative, well, if the result is negative, the function's concave down, so therefore we must have a local maximum. So therefore, local max at x equals negative 3. And then we're going to stick 4 into our second derivative. And we stick 4 into our second derivative. The result is 48 minus 6, which is 42. I don't really care. All I care is that it's positive or negative. If the second derivative is positive, the function must be concave up there. And this is a critical number. So it must be a local min. So therefore, we have a local min at x equals 4. And if you go back to your back in your notes, and you can see that when we used the first derivative test, this is in fact the same results we got. This is a cubic function. It behaves like this. All right. And here we had a local max at negative 3. And we had a local min at x equals 4. All right, so practice some problems with that. We are finally through with this section. Thank you for your patience. I'll leave that there for a second. Uh, all right, you can always pause too. I guess I really don't have to leave it here. Your to-do, which will be also posted on Blackboard. To-do. Read 4.3, exercises in the textbook. You're responsible for 1 to 19 odd, 25 to 41 odd, 57, 69, and 73 are all great problems. And then you're going to do XYZ homework. Four point five. Remember the XYZ sections don't coordinate exactly numerically with the Stewart sections. If you look in Blackboard, you can see the corresponding um, what section in XYZ goes with the corresponding section in Stewart. So 4.3, homework in the book. XYZ homework 4.5. We'll make this due next week, next Friday, 4, 2, 3, 4, 10. I think I moved it to 4, 10 because you're just getting these lectures posted. All right, guys. Um, check for my office hours on Blackboard. If my office hours aren't convenient, as always, you are welcome to send me a message and I'll be happy to pick a time that's convenient for both of us. Hope everyone's having fun and staying safe and I will see you in section 4.4 shortly.